stop that, stop that. Oh, I got a notification. Guess what, folks? Paranormal help is lost. It's lies. <laughs> it's all lies. Let's see. I don't have a notification. I got a notification, but we are froze. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I give up. All right, folks. This is take number 47. <laughs> Please oh. let me know what the video looks like and how the sound is. I think it's because you're doing it from here instead of over there. <laughs> we don't that's have the, an issue. That's the magic spot over there. Let me see how you sound. Talk. Four score and seven years ago, my father thought one of the got in a new nation, conceived of liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. And that's all I can remember. And Jennifer can hear us. Ed can hear us. Yay. Oh, I hear you. Turn that on. So you turn that on, we get that. Daddy, a street map. Okay. Um, Won't you? I can move right in. No, that's okay. So I just wanted to introduce everybody to my first guest, Dre, who's now leaving. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, we, uh. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jack. So. Jimmy Jack. Jimmy Jack. <laughs> they're, gonna, they're playing live, uh. Opening from Leah's couch, I think was the name of that event. <laughs> All right, guys. So we had a huge flub with everything we were trying to run before. Huge. Um, tried a different setup, a new, uh, a little bit of a new tech and audio setup. Uh, didn't quite work out. I think it's my laptop, honestly. So we've uh, moved on to the other, the other computer, and we're just gonna go old school like we always have. Um, start out with, it's been a really busy month for us. I uh, have a lot going on, or excuse me, September, because today is a new month. Happy October, everybody, and for those of you that celebrate early, happy Halloween. Because I know the people at work today uh, were already dressed up uh, in costumes for the first day of October. It was really interesting. Jim Dean and Jack Daniels. <laughs> Jimmy, that's not, the, that's not that kind of show. <laughs> anyway, September was a really, really busy month for us. Um, we had uh, we had our first we had our uh, live newsletter the first month. We had Realm Fest. We had our investigator investigation, and we've actually got another uh, big announcement that we're going to make uh, here in a little bit uh, tonight. So, congratulations, guys! You signed on at the right time on the uh, the right show. Oh, Jack, I can't believe you said that. That joke is so old. So anyway. Oh. Yeah, I know, right. Leo will join me here shortly. But uh, we're going to talk about, we'll, we'll start out talking about Realm Fest. You want to start there? Sure. Since you're off camera. So I'm talking, Leah is here. Y'all see her. Oh, right? they see me. I'm kind of leaning in the background. Do you see that creeper back there in the, in the, in the, Okay, well, what we're wearing, the tartan, the flannel. But anyway, so Ralph Fest was in Harriman, Tennessee. Uh, Lee and I got to go up there and spend the day and had a really good time. We got to meet uh, a lot of good people, uh, a lot of interesting people. Uh, made a few connections here and there. We did some networking, traded some, uh, some business cards. Um, got to talk to several different teams. Uh, I met with a gentleman up there to give a uh, shout out to uh, Spectral Tech was the name of the group. Uh, they let me listen to some audio evidence that they had gotten. Welcome back, Ray. And uh, had a good opportunity to sit and talk to them about the equipment, what kind of things they use, and um, just got to to you know socialize with some with some folk in the paranormal community. So I mean, a really good time was had by all. Uh, Leah uh, gave a really, really good presentation on spiritual warfare. Uh, if you have not had the opportunity to catch that, please go back and look uh, look it up. Uh, she did a real good job. She was real nervous about it. Uh, she hasn't given a 
for someone that used to be a college teacher, uh, was really nervous about giving a presentation, but I was really super proud of her. She did a really good job. Um, a lot of good questions were asked. Go sisters is with us. Oh, hey, go sisters. How are y'all doing? We we met them at Rome Fest. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay. I was actually going to just ask you to, to give them just a little bit of information on your your presentation, how it felt. And how it felt? How, because, like I said, you know, for someone that used to be a uh, college teacher, you uh, were really antsy to getting up there, but you did a really good job. Well, um, I have a personality that I'm a horrible introvert. <laughs> you would never so, know that. Yes. Painfully so. So, um, even though I used to teach, it was never easy getting up and doing lectures. It, this isn't even easy for me, even though y'all are not all physically here. It doesn't matter. I just sat here. Y'all are watching me. But, um, yeah, it, it started out kind of shaky, and then an event happened that kind of uh, broke me out of that. And, um, I was able to get back on track and focus, and then it just plowed through from then on um, through the rest of it. So, yeah. Do you want to talk about the event? I, mean, I was going to mention it, but I'm discussing it at all. Well, I mean, there's really nothing to discuss. It was just um, I had uh, some very important information to present in a, um, a setting that doesn't always welcome our um, or agree with I guess our viewpoints about our opinions concerning the paranormal. So typically we're in the minority. <laughs> a sliver minority. So uh, it was tough. There was that battle fighting that and not sure how it would be received or even received at all. And so um, someone had come up and try to, um, I guess, invoke the polar opposite of what I was discussing, uh, just to kind of, I guess, shape where I was. But, um, yeah, it was, I Like I said, it was really cool to watch because she was shaky up to that point, and when the question got asked, I even, because I'm sitting there filming her, uh, there was that moment of just, like this, but she took it really well in stride, and it was almost like, it, uh, I don't know, gave her confidence after that. Yeah, gave me the boldness that I needed to just press through the rest of it, so. And then after that, I was fine. I mean, I go on record to say, I and mean, we discussed it, and we're wholeheartedly believing that um, it was an attack, because she was out there trying to present information that, like she said, you know, a lot of people don't believe the way we do. Um, we are in the, the minority in a lot of ways, and she's out there presenting a, a topic that not a lot of people understand, not a lot of, or they either people don't understand, they don't want to hear it, or this is not widely accepted. Or it's not widely accepted. Accept. So we, I mean, I kind of had a feeling that we would, <clears throat> you know, maybe get some cold shoulders or some some people looking at us kind of like, you know, who, who are y'all? A bunch of Bible thumpers. But when this, this person came up and it was the first question asked, um, I mean, I'll, I'll go, I'll, I mean, they, the guy asked her, how do you conjure a demon? And how would you go about conjuring, how would you go about conjuring a demon? Because we had just, she had just been talking about, you know, demonic forces. And that was the question. And it was, I believe wholeheartedly it was an attack. It was an attempt to, um, take the focus off of what she was talking about and to distract. And it didn't rattle her cage at all. So, awesome job. Well, I mean, it was an attack in the manner that someone was just manipulated. They weren't going attacked. It was, it was on a kind of how you go head to head on a spiritual, a spiritual oh. way. It was being spiritual side of what was manipulated, you know, but 
Um, it was it was a distraction. But anyway, we had a great time. We met some really great groups of teaching with their sisters. Oh, sister. And uh, everyone was very sweet and pleasant. And uh, yeah, great group of people. The staff were amazing. And this was their first, it was the first, 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 I think. first time they got it. They're going to do it again next year, and we've already been told we can come back. So it was really, really great. Really enjoyed it. Lots of good vendors and stuff. I got a t shirt with a the big, with your daughter on her. With the staff of Watch Down and Jeans. <laughs> so I was good. And which, Thank you. Anywhere we go, Leah has to have a t shirt. doesn't matter where it's at. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so Realm Fest in the books. Had a lot of fun. Looking forward to doing it again. Um, go on record here. You know, thank you out to East Valley Paranormal Society. They're the ones that hosted it. Um, for the first time that something like that had been done, I think they did a really good job. And thanks for having us. And thanks for inviting us back next year. Um, we'll move on to that is not like that. Okay. We'll move on to the next thing that we had going on was our investigator investigation. Uh, yeah, really good too. Turned out really well. Had a good uh, virtual turnout with you guys, and Leslie did an outstanding job. I don't think she is on right now. Um, but Leslie, if you pop on at any point or you watch this video later, you did an outstanding job. Um, I have been uh, on investigations that have been that I have been on this. Goodness, I can't speak for some reason. I've been on investigations with people uh, in the past that have been on more investigations that didn't do as well as Leslie. So Leslie, awesome job. Uh, we had some interesting experiences, um, some new experiences, because we have investigated that place before. Uh, we chose that place because we wanted to do a controlled environment uh, to make sure that you know anybody that we brought in, uh, there wouldn't be any issues or any uh, danger to them. Um, so since we had investigated there before, but we ran across some some new things. I know Leah picked up on some things that we hadn't hadn't found before. Um, so we definitely actually will be following back up with that case and seeing what we need to do uh, to make sure that the people that work there can uh, work in peace. Um, just lost my train of thought. I was going somewhere with that. Um, no. But Leslie did a really good job. Um, I will. I will do it again. That's thank you. That's what I was going to say. We're going to do that again. There will be another investigator investigation. Um, we don't know when yet. Um, October generally turns into a pretty busy month for us um, between emails, messages, phone calls. Um, we do get a, a lot of things going on during the month of October. So, um, but we do plan on doing another investigator uh, drawing. Um, we've, Leah and I have talked about some different ways um, to get people to enter, um, different ways to enter, and um, I say that a lot too. But you guys know that you're used to me. But we're definitely going to do it again. So I know a lot of people were like, "Why didn't I get? You know, I wanted to go, or I didn't get the opportunity." Guys, we're going to do it again. Uh, we may actually uh, announce uh, the drawing further out this go around. I think we only gave you a little, little less than a month last time. We may announce further out that way more people can get in there and get their entries so they can come investigate with us. Yes, interesting. All right. So before our next announcement, do you have anything that you want to speak on? So, gonna give up my seat. Give up her seat. So, the big announcement that we were gonna announce tonight, I know we've been very brief, but we wanna try to give as much time to this as possible. Um, and Ed couldn't be here because he got caught up before. He didn't play that all I, I did not. I was gonna get to that. Thank you. Ed, I know you're watching. Yeah, he's in the chat, so. Um, Ed, are you still heading this way? I, I don't even know if you're still trying to come or not, but. Uh, Ed did want to be here. He got hung up at work, and he's been trying to get here. It just seems like there's everything in the world has tried us, has kept us from trying to make this announcement. Ed didn't want to get here. We couldn't get the technical stuff to work. Leah wasn't here in the beginning. It took her getting here to get this live. So, guys, applause and hearts up for Leah. We wouldn't be online. I wasn't her. 
But, yeah. Oh, Ed's here. Oh, like physically here? No, he's just here. Oh, he's pulled off watching. <laughs> oh, he's pulled off. <laughs> okay, he's probably okay. just waiting for you to get on with it. Oh, already. I'm sorry. I thought, I'm we were, gonna... I thought we had another. I thought we had another moment like we did on the investigation, or somebody was uh, at the door. Uh, but anyway, so without further ado, if most of you had noticed on our uh, investigator investigation, we actually had two investigators. Now Leslie was the winner, but we brought somebody else on uh, to give an opportunity to investigate with us, and. Just want to go out there and announce that we have added a fourth member to the Paranormal Health Ministry, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jack Haynes. <laughs> you never saw it. I didn't have the applause cue. It's just part of the line. Hello, Now, guys, I have investigated. Leah and I have actually investigated with, uh, with Jack in the past. Uh, we've uh, been on several different. Well, yeah. <laughs> Several different investigations. Uh, we work well with him. You know, in, in the in the field, outside the field, I count him as a friend. So we wanted to bring him on board. Uh, my last investigation was kind of a trial to see how things would work out, and we all got together, discussed it, and we're no longer three. We're now four. Yay. So out of the Fantastic Four, which one are you? Um, I would like to be the invisible. But it doesn't quite. You want to be the invisible one? Yes, but it doesn't <laughs> usually work out that way. <laughs> Ed says, Welcome aboard, brother, even though you couldn't be here. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate it. And I uh, appreciate you guys uh, just extending the invitation to come play. I mean, just, just the first time, uh, much less to, to get to minister with you guys and to, to assist others. And the thing that I love. Most about your approach is that you, okay, there's two things that I'm going to mention. The fact that, number one, you're not trying to prove anything to anybody. Just here to help. And number two, no charge. Those are the two things that just, I think, is amazing because I also, I'm an actor. I do entertaining things, and I like to get paid for performing. This is not performing. This is helping, and I like I like that aspect of it. So, yeah, we uh, we and we've uh, done several different variations. Of this I know you and I have investigated under different platforms, under different teams, under um, different umbrellas. Um, when we initially got together, this team we just you know were your typical ghost hunting team, but we felt there was a call, mm -hmm. and we have always been kind of very I don't want to say picky about whether we were to bring anybody else on board or not. But I mean, like yeah. Leah said, we're, we're in a we're in a minority to speak. So you got we have to be careful because we do consider ourselves a ministry. We have to consider integrity. Yeah. So anybody we bring on has to I mean has to fit a certain mold and and go there, sir. I'm pretty moldy. So. <laughs> So why don't you uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself? You know, I mean, you already mentioned you're an actor. Mm -hmm. What else, what else do you have going on? Well, I can present my resume to nobody ever believe it. So I'll, just, <laughs> I'll try to keep it brief. Um, what first got me interested in the paranormal was the fact that I grew up with it. Uh, a lot of strange stuff in my house, and it wasn't like the morbid fascination of oh, cool things are happening. It was just more of a you know, some people grow up around cars and like so these are this is how cars work. I grew up around strange things happening, so I wanted to understand how they um, and as I got older I realized that uh, not everything that's unexplained is either paranormal with the explanation of something that's normal, or if it is paranormal, it's not necessarily something I want to play with. Uh, those are two things that I learned as I got as I got older and um, ended up, I'll never forget the moment that I first realized that this thing was bigger than just my interest. Um, there was, uh, I happened to be a Catholic charismatic priest, and there was a young lady that did prayer. And so he saw me and he's like, hey, you come here. <laughs> Um, 
But it was a young lady that needed prayer, and so he didn't want to be alone with her uh, during this time. So he asked her to come back. And so he, he anointed her, and as he's praying for this tiny little person, 120 pounds something wet, with rocks in her pockets. And from her navel area, as he begins to pray, there is the sound that I'll try to imitate. <laughs> Check it out. And you shouldn't hang up just now. <laughs> so I look at the priest who is smiling and continues to pray. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, cool. If he's okay, he must be okay. And he continues to pray, and then suddenly she lifts out from here a sigh. And I just see her whole body relax. And she's asleep. And so we slip out. And I'm like, so! Just curious, when that thing started, whatever it was doing, I noticed you smiled. Why? And he said, well, have you ever dealt with a bully? Not Do you ever notice that the louder and madder a bully gets, the quicker it gets that way? The less powerful they are? Notice that. He said, yeah, so when that thing started acting that way, that quick, I knew it wasn't going to be a battle. So I had it. And I thought, okay. And so I've always remembered that. And then, But that was like the first thing. And then after that, it just, I kept getting pulled back into it, pulled back into it. And so uh, I ended up getting training from folks that knew what they were doing. Uh, that's just kind of what kicked it off. And then uh, paranormal research came later, after that. Uh, I assisted with a few teams to just come in and assist, and so come up with that went that way, and it's just continued since then. It's just, uh, it's something that, it's important to me because I know what it did in my home as a child, and how disrupting it can be. And so when somebody reaches a point where they want help, I want to make sure that they do it. That's, that's yeah. I mean, it started out when I mean, with myself. I mean, growing up, it was just curiosity. I mean, we live in the South. We're in the the hotbed of the, the Civil War, so there's always you know been the ghost stories in the battlefield, and haunted cemeteries. So we would go out and you know try to you know, get stuff going on, you know, see what we could pick up, take pictures, go out to Corpse Wood. I mean, Ed and I, you know, who's watching, I know, we've been into the battlefield. We've walked uh, from one side of the other of that battlefield to the other, every inch of it, trying to find uh, paranormal activity. And as I got older, it turned away from being the 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 fun, you know, ooh, the thrill to curiosity to eventually where there's a need here uh, for help. Um, Lee, I'm hearing your story, so it's very similar to Leah's. In a way, you want to kind of give a little bit of aspect of off camera since you can't see. Well, I mean, ever since I was little, I've experienced paranormal. They able to see things and really didn't quite understand it. And the uh, church that I was raised in, we just didn't talk about that stuff. You just keep it to yourself. So I've spent a lot of years and time thinking that something was wrong with me. Uh, for my ability to, to, to see these things. And uh, then, you know, later on through life, actually joined a church that uh, really helped me to see that it was actually a gift from God, a, a gift of, yeah, we all have an amount of, of discernment, but it was just that, I guess, extra, extra helping of discernment that um, helped me to really realize that something that's not, it's not anything wrong with me, that God gave me this gifting to help others. Yeah, I could have went another way with it, I'm sure, um, but that's not what it's given to us for. Right. It's to be used for God's glory 
and then also to uh, to provide that spiritual wisdom or insight to what's going on, where it originated from, because we really can't get rid of anything, anything, unless we get to the root of it. Right. And if you don't have that ability to see what that root is, then you'll just get, you'll only just hit the surface of things. It'll be a band-aid over it. But over time, that band-aid's going to wear off again. Now you're in a, a big mess of trouble again. So you really have to weed out and root and pull that root out in order to, to get absolute resolution. So now, even though I see a lot of things that I really don't want to see, <laughs> um, as in that it's horrifying, but understanding that it is a gifting and that God's going to protect me and take care of me as long as I use it um, for his glory and as he intended me to use it. I remember being there with you at that church whenever you were finding out what it was and we were sitting across the table uh, being asked, well, what did you do for fun? We were honest. We all do that exchange we like, well, do we really want to? Investigators, and we didn't get shunned. We got accepted. Right. Like we've got a whole bunch of people here. We need you to talk to that support what you do. So yeah, you don't hear that no very often at all. Bill Marion, I love you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, we actually have a question from the chat room for Jack. Jack, how do you prepare yourself for an investigation? Um, for I'd say prayer and fasting, but. <laughs> uh, you've seen me in an ad, right? Yeah, okay. um, I try to. Okay, first of all, I think in hunts and movie books, so forgive me, but if you've ever seen, I can't remember which, which movie it is, but the old baseball movie where the pitcher, whenever he's going to go pitch, it says clear the mechanism, and then the rest of the world just goes away and focuses on it. You don't have to have seen the movie to understand what I'm saying. I have to clear the mechanism. I have to get everything else off my mind and just center it on my relationship, this relationship, and a clean slate. Uh, if I've got other things on my mind, other things I'm worried about, and then when I walk into it, then I'm not where I need to be to be able to help the way that I show it. And so, uh, it's like when you go to work, uh, whatever's happening outside, you got to leave it at the door so you can uh, give the focus that you need to your work. This is just uh, another work of the same. Kind of focus as necessary. You just gotta uh, get yourself focused and pay attention to it for once again so that as things come up, you can be aware. Uh, and it's, it's awareness that is extremely Different kind of importance to it, but the same type of awareness that a police officer should have when they're walking into a situation where there might be something possible in the area. They got to know what's happening. They got to be able to see 165 degrees. Yeah. Uh, it's the same kind of focus that I try to achieve. So the way I start with that is prayer, uh, and not not just prayer in the sense of saying words. Prayer in the sense of silence and listen. Because a prayer that's just you speaking is half of a conversation at best. Uh, a monologue where God's just waiting for you to give him a chance to get where it was at first. But where here are my concerns. We have to say back in, in, in silence. That's that's the way I prepare. So silence, I think, is the, the, my final answer. 
And that's something that, I mean, I even, I, I know I struggle with it myself sometimes. I think at some point, you know, we all have uh, in our prayer life where we sit there and, you know, we rattle off our laundry list, our grocery list of things we want, you know, Daddy, I want this, 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 and this, and now I'm going to go. We don't, that, that time of reflection and listening is just as important as the, the initial, uh, your side of it, because when you, you have not because you ask not. But, you know, you've got to sit there and listen and hear what he has to say, because what you ask for, you may not be ready for. So I think that's really, really good. That's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. You look like you had something to tell me. But I, I agree with the, the focus because even with a lot of preparation in this type of environment, this type of field, you're gonna, it's gonna attempt to just get you distracted. It's gonna try to get you your mind off the prize and. Well, and that, I get a lot of flack from y'all because I don't carry even a flashlight. And I get too focused and distracted on what's in my hand and, and that I have to just stay here to take all this stuff so I can focus and I can get to that place because, I mean, that's the whole point of me being there. And uh, it's all these other little distractions that, you know, I'm going to get a of or else I'm not going to do it I understand. I'm just giving you a hard time. I'm not oh, I know. Well, I, just, I didn't mean that. It, it makes for a good joke because... I mean, even whenever the the investigator investigation, the first thing Leslie asked is, "We had to keep the flashlight," and I just laughed <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, you just don't even know the battle. Because from my perspective, I mean, I'm I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm thinking, you know, from the husband perspective, I at least you want to have flashlights just to trip over anything. Well, just make sure I have enough light surrounding me. And I guess if you, if you can discern the spirit, you can discern the whole of the world. <laughs> Let's not go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason. If those of you who watched our lives, you ever notice whenever we walk through a place, usually I'm in the front or in the back, or it's the other way around. Ed's in the front, but he is always in the middle, so that we walk through the spider webs, the the yes. holes, the, the branches on and the And if ground. anybody's coming after us from behind, <laughs> they're going to get somebody else first. <laughs> Not me. So then where, where are we going to have Eddie walk? Is he going to walk like this around you so nothing gets you on the sides? I don't know how can you see us, but maybe you can go for uh, Did we let you know that being the new member that makes you faint? No, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> certain it does. Uh, and also, for those playing along at home, just so you don't get confused, they will occasionally slip and call Eddie because it's another thing uh, of mine. Yeah. Um, well, it's fine. Two heads are better than one, but uh, for the sake of uh, less confusion, I tend to go by Jack. So uh, if they do say Annie, it's not offensive to me. It just may be confusing to you. Yeah, I'm going to work on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. If I know somebody by one name and they decide to go by a different one, it's going to be. Well, I'm sure they're just sitting out and they really just have to go by it, but, you know. I go, uh, you wake up my family and chat now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what Sis Lewis did. Really? Sis Lewis at age five went out to play. It's five. Came back and announced, from now on, I shall be known as Jack C. Until the day he died, he was Jack. Just, yeah. just picked it up. And actually, he's where I got my name. Uh, when I was on the radio, uh, I was under my fur thing, which I've never liked. And, sorry, Mom. <laughs> and um, at some point, I was offered a job at a different radio station. So I went to my boss and said, hey, do you mind? Do you think it's conflict of interest if I work at both stations? He said, I don't care. Just change your name. And so I looked for one, and I chose Jack Staples because Clyde Staples Lewis. Yeah. Jack Staples to, to honor uh, C.S. Lewis. And while Staples I use on stage, Jack I use all the time. Well, yeah. I mean, it's him. Right. Another question. Ed is actually posting this one. Ed, I want your answer in return. He wants to know what each of our favorite Bible verses are. I don't think we have to quote it. I'm just going to go out on the land and say Psalm 91. 
Uh, I use that one quite frequently. Um, it is a spiritual warfare verse, um, if not the spiritual warfare verse. I reference it a lot um, whenever um, I'm preparing, um, getting ready to go into battle. Um, I have read it um, during battle. Um, it's Arabic. That's my favorite, without a doubt. Leah's still thinking. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Nice. I've got two favorites. One is Ephesians 6 1 5, that basically says, We're one, get over yourself. And the other one is uh, Jesus Wept, because it's first one everyone. Oh, John 11 35. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> I love it. You can't use that as your favorite. <laughs> but. <laughs> But you saw a reaction. I think it actually honestly is a And besides that, not only is it the shortest, but it actually has meaning. Yes. You know, it's one thing to say that he gets it. But he wept. You know? And if people can claim, oh, it's just because people around him were sad. He didn't say he cried. He didn't say he had sympathy tears for them. He wept. He got emotional because of what his friend had suffered and gone through and had died. And he fixed it. Right. And if you go into the if you go into the, the word study and get deep into that, there's actually different wording for cry. Because the, at that, that time that was just part of the mourning process, part of the ceremony, people would get out there and they cry and whatnot. But the word wept, I mean there is Emotion behind it. He, he felt pain for his friend's suffering, and he missed him so much. He thought, oh. yeah. "Got an answer, Lee?" Uh, <laughs> I have several. Um, it just depends on the place that I'm in. But I guess one that would apply at all times is where it says that I will praise Him for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Good one. I think so. <laughs> now, it's like me. There's another verse that I like. Um, I can't, again, I can't remember it. I can't quote it. But the line is um, He made us a little lower than the angels, but crowned us with glory. So that's just one of those things. It's like, you know, we're so insignificant, but we were His favorite creation. So Becky says, Fear thou not, Brian. I like that one. And, and it adds John 3 16. Which is a really good one. Always, always a good one. Always a good one. I really like that conversation we had with Nicky. Well, most people probably think famous, but yeah, yeah. he's my buddy. Hi, Nicky. I get it. <laughs> Guys, do you have any other questions for us? It's a little bit of an open forum tonight. We just wanted to make our big announcement. Introduce Jack, get some uh, some information from him. So, has anybody got any questions? Leah, do you have anything you want to throw in here? Um, not particularly. Let's see. Yeah, I've been trying to follow. Becky along. says, "My God, seeth me the darkness and the light is up. The light to God." Yeah, we've got some great things coming ahead. Yes. And just only adding another board has made us that much more stronger. So. Definitely. It's something we had we had thought about and we had prayed for for a while. Um, we've had opportunities, or I won't say opportunities, we've had other people that have come and, and come and gone and we, we've considered and, and talked to and it just it wasn't it wasn't God's will at that time. And we decided, you know, it's been we've been doing this for a couple of years now, um, as our team. I mean I think now I mean I've said it before, we've got now more uh, over thirty plus years of investigative experience now in this team. So um, I feel like we're in good company. Yeah. Um, another thing that we had to carefully consider also is 
that it wasn't just adding somebody just for another body to do some more evidence pickup or or to record anything like that. It was a prayerful addition to the team because a lot of what we handle tend to be more darker. Right. And, I mean, there's a reason for that, but we have to stay in that direction instead of going more towards the entertainment side because there's a need, huge need for this, for resolution. Yes. And a lot, typically what you see is just documentation and these people are being driven out of their homes, there's no peace, there's fear, there's worry, it, it's taxing. And this job is not for everybody. It's not for everybody. And then there's that. You've okay. got to be able to have that relationship with God in order to stay strong individually. And as long as everyone's staying strong in their faith individually, when you come together and bring that as a team, then that's the powerhouse. I do find it interesting. Uh, ironically, that focus needs to be on completing ministry and not entertainment. It's a good one. It's not a I mean, I'm not just an actor, but I'm just the irony of that hit me as you were talking, and so I made a facial expression. I wanted to explain what that, what that facial expression was, but the irony struck me. But you're, you're so right to so many, and I'm not, I'm not trying to insult uh, Criminal researchers. Yeah. Your, your focus is where your focus is, and it's it's fine. Um, There's different giftings for everybody. Absolutely. If, if but you're a researcher, then you're a researcher, and that's what you do. But if you are a researcher, keep this in mind. Don't go to people's homes, stir crap up, and then leaving them with it. Amen. If there's something there you can't handle, call us. Don't leave them a mess. Because I've seen that over and over again where you know, what do we do now? Because if we thought it was bad before and we got evidence on it, but now it's worse. So if you are a researcher and you get into something that you can't figure out how to, to, to handle, one of the things that I've been doing for over a decade now um, is when the professionals run out screaming, dialing the cell phone for some other idiot to come in, I'm that idiot that goes in, so we'll go in and we'll, we'll clean it up if that's what needs to happen. So don't leave people in the mess. Wait. One of, one of our cats is in the room. This is Bob. You haven't met her yet. She's nice. sheepish. And but something I want to add to that is there's, there is no shame in admitting that there is an area that you don't have the expertise in. I think a lot of teams or researchers, anybody, when they go into something, they, they've been in a situation where uh, we don't know how to deal with this. And in some situations, the reason why, the, and I'm going with positive intent here as best as I can, when they've left a situation, they've done so in fear because they didn't know what to do. But that's, again, I think that's where our team fills that gap. So we want to try to get this out there that if, you're in an area or you're dealing with a case that you don't know it's gone much darker. And we've had this. We've had people reach out to us and ask what to do. Um, there's no shame in that because I will tell you right now, and if this show hasn't proven it, we are not the most technologically based team that there <laughs> is. This is probably our biggest weakness. Now, we do. We can hold an audio recorder. We, we can gather evidence. We can <laughs> Record, you know, we can review evidence, you know, we can do all that. But I mean, when it comes to the high techest of the high tech, we we're not there, guys, and we'll admit that. That's not our focus either. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's nice. Yeah. It's always nice to have new toys, but yeah. but if you like to donate your expertise, we're willing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we uh, I know uh, Ed has said it. I think on the last two videos we've done, if you're a Somebody out there that knows something about tech, please reach out to us because we, uh, I mean, with this, you know, we want to try to, to give the best experience possible for you guys watching. 
And I think especially today, we probably tried to go a little over our head uh, and our knowledge, you know, we're living beyond our means, so to speak, and trying to, to get the best for you guys out there. But like Leah said, it's not our focus, it's not our strong suit. So if you're a team that, you know, dealing with the dark cases is not your strong suit, um, reach out to us. Because um, I know that there's several people out there that, that advertise, you know, that they don't deal with dark cases, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you walk in on a case and it turns dark and it will not happen, there, there's four people here that will reach out in a heartbeat. Yeah, don't to help do you. just a, you know, back off and. Leah's doing this, you can't see. Yeah, <laughs> and then leave, um, defer, and call on somebody that can't handle it, or you know. I'm glad we got, I, I'm actually glad, we, I'm glad you brought that up when we said that because I, a lot of times I've, I'm going to kind of bare my soul here for a second. A lot of times whenever we go out there and we, we discuss this talk, because we brought this up before, um, I feel, part of me feels guilty because I feel like we're, we're pointing fingers. And never do I want to come out and say that I'm pointing fingers at anybody or bashing anybody how they investigate or what they do. Um, because everybody has their strong suit, everybody has to call it. But don't get in over your head in a situation um, because there's people that will help. Will help. You know, we're a phone call away, we're an email away, we're a message away. Um, we all work jobs, so if, the, if we don't answer when you call the first time, we will get back to you. We usually uh, 24 hour turnaround time minimum. Uh, we contact people back. So, guys, uh, anybody out there that knows a team or someone that, that needs the help or a person, please share this. Share this with them. And, and I do want to throw out there, and that's actually how I got into paranormal research. Uh, originally, because I had been dealing with dark things, and a research team knew that. And they said, hey, if we ever run across anything dark, can you come help us? And I said I'd be I'd be glad to do that, and I didn't hear anything from them for what felt like ever. And maybe two years later, maybe a little bit longer, they called me and said, "Hey, we got something we need to talk to you about. Can you come research?" And I did, and it was interesting because another story. Bear with me. Uh, it was interesting because they sat down with me, and it was just the two lead investigators, and they gave me a breakdown of the case. And based on what they told me. I wasn't convinced that it wasn't psychological. Uh, I didn't feel like it was, but I wasn't convinced. And so with that, I asked, okay, don't tell the client why you called me. Just make me part of the team as far as the client's concerned. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And so when they went back to meet with the client, they told them we're going to bring a few more team members, and they did. A couple of team members plus me. Uh, and so I wasn't the only new person she knew. And so she met the first person. Oh, hey, you know, how's it going? Met the next person. Oh, hey, how's it going? And then I walked through the door and she immediately said, No, get him out! And I was like, Oh, this is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. And um, I smiled because I know what happens when the bullet gets mad quick. Yeah. And it went, it went really well. And after the investigation was over, um, we did a house blessing and told her how to keep it gone. Uh, last I heard, things were still cool. Uh, but after the investigation was over and we got back together to kind of recap, uh, they asked me to join the team at that point. We like you. Why do you keep doing this? And so that's kind of how I, I got to do the investigation portion. So I'm still heavy on the spiritual aspects of it. Um, I've learned a lot about the, the research portion. Uh, I'm capable of doing that stuff, but it's it's more about the battle is, is where I'm most right. useful. Most yeah. useful, and not the show where I'm most comfortable. Right. <laughs> most useful. That's, I mean, I don't 
contribute anything other than, than that. No technical, no anything. I mean, I can review. Right. Say the same. I, uh, I mean, I'm the most technical of the team. That's sad. Um, I mean, I've got my own, I mean, I, as far as, you know, the spiritual aspect, you know, I don't pick up anything. I don't, you know, I can't see anything. I get, uh, I'll say I'll get a gut feeling about something. I think I can read people pretty well, but I mean, from a, that type of aspect, I don't pick up anything. I've got my own gifts. Um, the Bible part of it, definitely. I think I, I mean, I don't understand it because it's not me. It's, it's God. So. You I always know my favorite thing, though. I don't try to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> I just do what I'm told. But it, it, uh, kind of interesting that the story you told now kind of gives more light of uh, what was going on at the, the investigator investigation. You made the statement that sometimes when I come in, they wait, they get mad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, the, often they tend to, to not like it. Um, but it's really interesting, just the whole dynamic. Uh, there is one type of entity in particular that I always know I'm going to have trouble with because the feeling is nostalgic. Mm -hmm. Because it's what I grew up with. Okay. And when that happens, see, that's the one where I'm in trouble. If I'm by myself, I might be in this real trouble before I realize that there's any, even anything wrong. So that's why I like working with you specifically because you, you protect me on that side. That's my blind side. And you protect me. Uh, but of course, once I realize what that feeling is, it's no longer a problem. Because once I realize, oh, this is not safe, then it's fine. Uh, it's walking into a hole before I realize I'm walking into it. It's, it's the danger. Mm -hmm. I think ever. I mean, I know what my weakness is. Whenever, again, whenever I get into, uh, I'm just going to call it battle mode for all intents and purposes. Um, and I've been in it, and I know it ha it happened. At, I can say this because it was advertised on the video. I went to the history company, and we were blessed. I had to go through there and do a blessing. Uh, in the midst of that, I don't know how to explain it, but you can be riding high, you know, in battle, and all of a sudden it just hits you that you are nothing, that you mean nothing, and that you are the biggest piece of crap, and that you are not worth what you're doing, that you're worthless. And that is probably the one thing that gets me the most. Because, guys, I'm not perfect. I never have been. I've got my troubles. I've got my hangups. The thing that I, I, everybody does. Everybody does. So I know somebody, I feel like somebody out there needs to hear this. Um, you're going to be told in everything that you do, if you're trying to do something for God, that the enemy is going to try to bring you down and tell you that, you know, and remind you of every little thing that you've done wrong. You know, you know you're trying to, to praise God or trying to, to push something out. Well, you know, you smoked a cigarette today. You looked at, you know, something on the internet that you shouldn't have or whatever. And it's just going to keep reminding you, but guys, you know, if you're acting in faith and Jesus is your Savior and God's on your side, you can be forgiven and you are, through the blood of Christ, worthy to do, to serve. And I'm, I'm just going to start preaching here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it brief, but I know that's the one thing that hits me every time. I'm out there is, you know, well, who are you to do this? You're you're nothing. You you grew up in Wrinkle, Georgia. You know, your high school had a daycare. You know. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Leah saying that to me. Never mind. Um but sorry, I had to get some interject some humor in there, guys. But seriously, that I mean I struggle with that every time we get into something like that. That's my that would be my uh, And then I mean that's when it recognizes that you're going to go in the battle mode. I mean, the same thing with me when we were in Oklahoma. I was attacked in that way. It hit me in my weakness. And, 
boy, it, it, it stopped me for a minute. But once that realization came and we pushed through that, then we were able to be effective. Very effective. And used, you know, in the way that we were meant to be. So it's just, it's going to hit you. A lot of it, I know with me, is my self confidence. Because that, that is a weak part of me. And, uh, I mean, even parts of you as well. So, I mean, it's going to hit that point first just to, to, uh, cripple you. It, it, it's always going to try to put doubt in the mind. Yeah, he's the Some shape or fashion. He's the father of lies, yes. And an accuser. We're talking Absolutely about that, accuser. that stuff. He's accusing you and to keep you on a level of condemnation so you want to be able to do it. Now, I, I, I want to ask this. It's, it's more of a, I don't know how to explain the clarity. Maybe you can or you. There is a difference between conviction and condemnation. And a lot of people get under conviction and then the conviction turns into condemnation. Or they're under condemnation, they think it's conviction. Can one of the two of y'all explain that maybe a little bit better, probably better than I can? We can try, try. Well, conviction is when, conviction is more so, I mean, that that is definitely ordained. Okay, okay. when I say ordained, it, it is a thought. The Holy Spirit will come and convict mm -hmm. and to bring awareness to things that that are in your life that do not line up with where God wants you to be. So that conviction brings you to a period or a I don't know what the word is, brings you to that moment of repentance. Okay. Condemnation is just keeping you down instead of you walking in that forgiveness. If you can come to the repentance, God has forgiven you instead of just walking, you know, walking in that forgiveness and that grace. Uh -huh. You're allowing it to, where God forgives it, we don't because we're human, but we just mull over it. Well, God didn't really forgive me because... I was doing this, and surely God wouldn't forgive me for that. Okay. That makes sense. No, that, that, that's that, that's kind of what I thought, but I like I said, you put it you put it in a lot better words than I would have. Here's how I phrase it: Conviction is don't touch the stove; it's hot. That's conviction. Right. Condemnation is you idiot! I told you not to touch the stove. Yeah, that's good. You know, conviction brings you back to God because. It's about relationship. Conviction brings you back to God. Condemnation makes you think you can't go back to God. Yeah. It's when when Eve and Adam did what they did, God immediately turned his back, right? No. The next day, evening, God did exactly what he had always done. He came to visit again. What was different? They were hiding. Why were they even hiding? Because of condemnation. Yeah. And he said, come here. And they said, you can't. And he said, why not? Because we're naked. Who broke the relationship? Not God. Because he's still saying, come here. And they're saying, can't. Condemnation. Oh, I like that. <laughs> God wants that relationship. All you got to do is step out in your nakedness and go, sorry, I'm naked. You yeah. can go, I know. Let me fix it. <laughs> and, and that's the difference. And that's why whenever you're going to go into a spiritual battle, they tell you to confess all of your sins and get that clear. Not because you can't do battle if you have sin in your life. It's because the enemy is going to point out, I don't even need the, need the devil to do it. I'm going to do it myself. Point out everything I've done wrong. And if I haven't already made it right in here and in here, then it's going to distract you during the battle. But the reality, reality is the battle's not mine anyway. So even if there is something that shouldn't be there, God's still got it. But if I haven't worked it out myself, 
then it will distract me and it will cause issues where it didn't have to. But if, I mean, honestly, if you do something that you shouldn't do and it's, it's just, this, okay, this is sin. This is just bad. Shouldn't have done it. And then the devil comes at you flat-footed. If you trust God, it doesn't matter whether you got sin in your life or not. Flat-footed. If you trust God, God will handle it. By the way, you should probably get rid of that sin. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's not... I'm not saying you do anything you want and it, it doesn't hurt you. I'm saying if you're doing wrong, it's hurting you. It's not hurting God. God still loves you. God still wants to give you that back. Put it all around with that. But but conviction is come get cleaned up. Condemnation is I'm too dirty. No. The condemnation is a lie. Yeah. You're not too dirty if I think that. Becky posted, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ and call according to his works. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting chills over here listening to me. <laughs> this is good stuff. I don't know where else to go. <laughs> well, mostly I just want to say that we're here for you guys. If we do this, if it's, if it's spiritual battle, that looks like uh, ghosts, you call us. Uh, if it's a spiritual battle that looks like, um, you know, I'm thinking about taking another drink and I need not do that, feel free to call us. I don't care what it is. We're, we're here. We specialize in a certain area, obviously. But if we can be any kind of blessing, please give us that honor and that opportunity. Uh, if, if you, it's October, and certain things are on my mind right now that are causing the timing. If for some reason you feel like you're not worthy of living, then it's just better to go ahead and just end it, solve your marriage problems. Don't. You're loved. Your importance. And if it looks like everybody else hates you for whatever reason, let us love them. We'd love to. So reach out. Don't don't believe the lies. Because I, I know what it is to get into such a dark space that You can't see the light. I don't know why you can't see the light. The light's still there. So if you're if you're struggling in, in a situation where strange things are happening at your house or in your business, and you're hearing these whispers of how horrible it is and it's not worth it. If you're a researcher who who's in it for the fun and you want to prove that you know there's something else out there and run across something that's got you terrified and messing with a family that can't handle it, call us. Um, now, if you're a professional researcher and you have to call us, we'll charge you double. <laughs> zero double zero is still zero. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, we're going to wrap this up. We'll give it another minute. If anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, words of love or wisdom, yes. yeah. click the donate button. We don't have one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I should pull <laughs> <should, I> <laughs> one up there. Just. We, we can get it at a donate to the donut. Oh. That would really hurt with our prayer and fasting. Let's <laughs> just do the prayer. Just do the prayer. <laughs> we can eat fast. Is that yeah. Kind of cool? yeah. I can I can put a lot of donuts. And it says welcome aboard <clears throat> welcome aboard my bearded brother. Oh, in case you're wondering, I'm going for Santa Claus this year. Gonna bleach it out. But. So what's your excuse, Ed? 
I thought we were all doing Civil War reenactments later on. I'm not growing one. It's about wintertime. Leah's going to put shade. This gets any thinner. It's going to be Frederick Douglass. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. No. <laughs> but guys, thanks for stopping in tonight. Again, thanks for bearing with us with the technical difficulties. It wouldn't be a paranormal help show if there was some sort of technical difficulty. Uh, that has become our... Uh, our thing, we want to rectify that in the future, but again, like I said, not our strong suit. We've got a completely different focus. Uh, stay tuned to us this month. Like I said, October is usually a big month for us. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I'm going to be out of town some uh, during this time frame, so um, you know, I'm going to be leaving everything in good hands with Jack being on board, uh, Ed and Leah. Uh, guys, reach out to us. We're here for you. What about Ed? What about Ed? Never mind. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh. This team just got so much better. <laughs> wow. Anyway. It's warm in here. <laughs> um, anyway, but guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we'll make some announcements throughout the month on stuff that's going on, and we will see you November 1st for our next newsletter. We'll probably see them before then, oh, but yeah. For the newsletter. We'll see you before then. Yeah. Definitely. So, guys, again, Jack, thanks for joining us up. Thank you. Have a good night, y'all. Bye. 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 <laughs> Technical team. Yes. Y'all stop. I can't do I it. I am technologically declined. So I'm good. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay, here we go. Push the button. Oh, I want to. Yes, I want to end it.